हेलो श्रीमती राजश्री बिरला जी अ वॉम वेलकम टू द ट्रांसफॉर्मर सीरीज सीजन टू राजश्री जी द आदित्य बिरला ग्रुप इज एंगेज इन एड्रेसिंग अ नंबर ऑफ डेवलपमेंट इश्यूज थ्रू इट्स फिलेंथ्रोपी एफर्ट्स सो टेल मी हाउ डिड यू चूज वॉट एरियाज टू वर्क ऑन and what has been your experience in working with the ngos and government organization in addressing some of these issues the approach to csr is one of collaboration accountability and ensuring sustainability over the long term let me explain a bit nearly 90% of our projects are in the villages of our country all of our csr projects are planned in a participatory manner in consultation with community influencers such as the district authorities panchayats the mukhiyas school teachers and others so our focus areas are fixated on the needs they wanted their children to be educated they wanted health care and they wanted to be able to stand on their feet so naturally education health care and sustainable livelihood the basics necessary to lift them out of their poverty levels became our focal points by involving the community we are able to nurture a culture of mutuality and alignment that is rootedness in the communities most of our projects are implemented by our teams each community project has a unique dimension we do not work in silos wherever the expertise required is not there with us or in the community we recourse to partners for example for animal vaccination and artificial insemination we have to tie up with an expert ngo so developing linkages and calling on experts or key players to become a part of the project works very well we strongly believe in the need to have strong partners who are committed to change we work with several like minded highly credible well established ngos and organizations in their respective domains to cite a few rotary international habitat for humanity bef cpa I hear foundation pradhan seva skill development councils ram krishna mission my rada dhan foundation smile foundation and many more along with the government the government and several ngos are our constant collaborators be it healthcare education skills development livelihood programs sanitation and drinking water a government has earmarked a lot of resources and funds to bring in inclusive growth we are largely working with the government in most of our healthcare projects as well as education and the swachh bharat mission we also align with reputed ngos take for instance our projects aimed at boosting farm productivity and animal health we have enlisted bear it is a leading national ngo specializing in the area of agriculture and animal husbandry in many of our villages such as kovaya in amreli and panakpuri in anand both in gujarat khor in nimach madhya pradesh and khajuria in ujjain besides other pan india we have bef engaged with us they help through artificial insemination maintaining animal health through vaccination and good feed besides extensive farmer training programs besides these we have watershed management protecting the farmer from drought all this work and bef's involvement has helped raise the income of the farmer through better land productivity and milk yield multiple times so farmers here are positive and have no cause to go into depression that is very inspiring indeed given your long engagement in the area of development 
what are your important learnings while working in CSR? What would be your suggestions to funders and corporates supporting development work? At our group, CSR is an evolved process and its legacy goes back to nearly a hundred years and we keep on evolving. We keep on learning as well. The most important lessons we have learned revolve around four pillars. Firstly, having an articulated social vision and embedding it in the business vision. Secondly, planning need-based projects and having a razor-sharp strategy for execution, factoring milestones, targets, performance management, and accountability. Thirdly, getting our work audited by reputed agencies in the CSI domain to ascertain the reports of the field workers. KPMG, AD Action, and the post grad MSW teams from leading universities headed by senior professors conduct an impact assessment study relating to our projects. Alongside, we have a team of 100 high caliber recruits from top notch business schools globally and in India who join our group at a relatively high level. As part of the induction process, they have to spend two weeks in the villages and assess one project each. So this way, we have an additional arm that audits 100 projects annually. Wherever there are gaps, we steer mid course correction. And fourthly, working in tandem with government agencies and recourse to their various developmental schemes which foster inclusive growth. This helps us extend our reach. Above all, you must have a team that gives you the edge. We are fortunate in that regard. We have a great team. The invaluable contribution, the energy, the passion, and the commitment to make a difference to the underprivileged makes our work count. That said, we all realize that the road ahead on the journey of inclusion is steep, but with determination and as proud Indians who dream of an India free from poverty, together we can reach the destination. Thank you very much for your time Rajshiriji and for sharing some great insights and your experiences of working in the development sector. Your work and philosophy of caring and giving will inspire many of us to work for the greater good of the society and our fellow human beings. Thank you so much.